Aloha, and welcome back to Ninth Island RC. Now, first, my apologies. You know, I know I promised this video a couple of weeks ago, and just unfortunately, the parts that I needed, I didn't have. I had to order some parts um, to do the servo relocation, and then I screwed up, I admit it, after ordering those parts, which I didn't realize to another day or two later, I realized I had forgotten to order something. So I had to place a second order and had to wait for everything to arrive. So, you know, again, my apologies, but the servo relocation is underway and it's actually almost completed. Um, so I got a few things to deal with. So to show you what we've got, yeah, just gonna remove the stock body for a minute and you can get a general idea of what I've done. Now, you notice that I've got it on top and something I'm gonna get to having to do with the length of the servo link. You can use the stock turnbuckle, but not with the stock rod ends. And let me see if I can show you. So this is actually one of the stock rod ends that came from the rod. And if you notice, the rod ends that are on it now are actually quite a bit shorter. Let's see if I can do a little comparison. Um, I'll actually include a little photo in the video about here. And you can see that, you know, on the right, that is the original stock rod end. For the replacement steering links, part R10018, for some unknown reason, they are including rod ends that are definitely shorter, as you can see from the uh, rod end on the left. Now, here's the cool thing, at least for right now, as you know, because they are including the wrong rod ends, these shorter rod ends can actually be put on the stock links and you can achieve a, a servo link that is the proper length. Once they get it corrected and they are including the correct rod ends, obviously that will not be the case. Um, these stock rod ends, I believe are 55 millimeters in length and or not, to use them for the servo relocation like this, you're going to need a turnbuckle that is 45, maybe 50. It, it's going to depend on where you're positioning your servo. And the reason I mention that is because part of it is going to be how far left, right, how far forward, rearward, where specifically you're mounting. You know, a number of things can determine what length turnbuckle you're going to need. So I'm not going to specify an exact length because of that. But just to give you a general idea of what I did, let me flip this around. So to do the conversion, I've actually tried to make it as simple as possible with as few modifications as possible. Notice I'm not using any zip ties like some are using. I don't trust those. They will cause the servo to move. Um, so stay away from using zip ties. Honestly, it's, it's, something that's going to be bound to fail at some point. For this, it, the part is as simple as the team associated aluminum servo mount with a carbon fiber plate for the RC-10B 6.2. And the reason I specified the 6.2, the 6.3 can also be used, but because of a different design in the aluminum side pieces, the six and the six point three. Sorry, and because of a different design, it makes it more difficult. The six point two. You see how it has it kind of dips down, and it allows you to put the screw right through, right through the carbon fiber plate. And normally, it would screw into the mount on the buggy. But in this case, what I'm using is the same stock screws that it came with and into M3 nylock nuts. It's that simple. As for mounting the carbon fiber piece of the servo mount 
to the brace, you're going to need to drill two holes. And I'm not showing you because it, the placement of the holes is going to entirely depend on where you want to place. And they don't even need to be in perfect alignment with anything. It's just any two holes, as long as you get the holes through the servo mount and through the carbon fiber um, brace in the exact same location. So what I did was once I determined where the servo needed to be, I used packing tape. Um, actually, no, I take that back. Um, I used duct tape to hold the two together perfect position. Plus, by having the tape over the bottom, that also protected the carbon fiber from splintering when you drill through it. Drilled one hole. That's all that mattered to start with. Put the screw and a nylock nut through that to make sure that it was in alignment, rechecked the alignment, made sure that it was perfectly, you know, perpendicular to the brace, and then drilled the second hole. The second part of the modification is that the holes that you drill through the carbon plate for the servo mount, you're going to need to add um, countersinks to that. Because obviously the servo is flush with that plate. Um, so the only other thing you need is, in this case, I used two M3 by 10. They are long enough that they stick out about two to three millimeters past the end of the nylock nut. That way you know that it's not going to come off. And then the only other thing is in terms of attaching the servo to the servo mount, um, where did I put it? I just had it. So what I used are the Protec aluminum servo mount grommets, part PTK 3041. They include the aluminum pieces as well as the screws. You do have other options out there. Um, Tamiya, for example, Tamiya, Tamiya. Um, they make a one-piece servo screw. So, and the whole thing is aluminum. I decided to go with this because the screws are steel, the grommets are aluminum, and it does fit perfectly nice. Um, as you can also see, I've used the servo horn that came with the servo instead of the stock servo horn, which is somewhere around here. I don't, oh, there it is. So the reason for that is they are both 25 tooth, but the placement of the teeth are off by one half tooth to this one. So where it's a peak, on here, it's a valley on here. So what you, if yours does come with it, what you want to do is try both. You know, don't just automatically go with this one. The reason I went with this one was because with the stock one, with the wheels turned fully left, the horn was brushing up right against the carbon fiber. Now, honestly, I may switch back to this and I'll tell you why. Because obviously I haven't set the endpoints. So once the endpoints are set, I may find that it's actually further away, thus I would be able to go back to this one. But the whole point is, with this one, without any endpoint set, in one position it was brushing up against the carbon fiber. Next tooth over, it was just way too far away. With this servo honer, it positioned it nicely in between that at full left, it's about one and a half, two millimeters away from the carbon fiber brace. So, you know, again, I may stick with this one. I may go back to the stock one. It, it all depends on once I get the endpoint set. As for the positioning, part of what I was talking about in how far left, right, how far forward, backward is going to have to do with the shape of the body. Because, you know, Obviously, this is quite low. It's curved inwards, which means if you have that servo too far left, you know, it may be, the bottom of it may be in line with this, but because the top is higher up and you've got that curve, 
it's going to push it over. So what I did was I actually placed the servo on top. You know, I, I installed the servo into the servo mount, placed the servo mount on top of the brace, placed it into a position that I thought was good, and then I just put the body over it and put it down into position. And it ended up moving the servo. And through doing that a few times, that's how I determined where the location needed to be. Now, I'm going to take one of my clear bodies. And yes, these clear bodies are out in the wild now. You can, you know, you can order them and, you know, they are getting delivered. Uh, pardon my mess here. Just sorry. As you can see, I am in the process of doing a uh, upgrade transformation. I do have the adjustable motor mount already installed, but I, in switching to 32P, getting rid of the 48P, um, I realized that the gears I have, just show you one, you know, five millimeter bore. I goofed. Yep. So I do have some uh, one eighth inch bore coming. So no problem there. But getting back to the uh, servo mount, let me just kind of like lightly align it. And you can see with the clear that it is definitely not hitting. And technically, I could have probably gone over another eighth of an inch. You know, quarter might be too much. But eighth of an inch, I could have definitely gone over and maybe even three sixteenths. Um, it's also positioned far enough back that, you know, even here, I'm not worried at all. By positioning it where I did, it's actually still holding the stock angle. Now, something that I may still do, and other, you know, you can do the same thing. It doesn't really matter whether you mount the servo link to the back or to the front of the horn. And, you know, I may actually reposition to the, to the front. So what that would do is if you notice as we turn, you know, actually I can't really do it because it's, it's not, there we go. So it, as it turns, it makes that angle more severe because the steering arm is coming forward when you turn it to the left or to the right, yet that maintains the same position here. So what is at a slight angle as you go to steer it left or right, it actually creates more of an angle. If, on the other hand, you position the steering link or the servo link in front, I've already tested it. It does not even come close to hitting anything. It's actually really good. It does position it slightly forward, but as you steer to the left and the right, it actually straightens it out. So instead of increasing the angle when mounting behind it, positioning it in front at full left and full right actually makes it perfectly parallel with the servo horn. So, you know, that's all I've got to show on this one. Now, coming soon, I will have a video. Um, once I get the upgrades installed, I've still got a ways to go. You know, first thing I'm trying to just resolve is the uh, gear problem. I am going to start working on getting other stuff installed while I wait for the gears to come. You know, I, I actually, I do already have some, but again, all the ones that I picked up, they were all five millimeter bore. So what I've got coming, I do have a 26 tooth um, coming. And it is also five millimeter bore, but it comes with the reducer sleeve. And that'll be great because it'll allow you to use gears that have a five millimeter bore, which also means that they've got a larger diameter grub screw, which is going to be better. You know, most grub screws are not perfectly flat on the bottom. They've actually got kind of like either a curve or an angle with a smaller flat area and then back up like that. So the contact area is actually smaller than the diameter of the grub screw. By using a larger diameter grub screw, you're going to have a larger surface area that will be hitting the flat of the motor. So, you know, until I switch to a different motor with a 5 millimeter, and it, since I want to keep the Rolarlo electronics in this, I'll probably go with one of the optional Rolarlo motors. 
Um, you can also see I'm working on the uh, ESC relocation. It's got a long ways to go, I admit. That's why it's in pieces. So there you have it. There is the promised servo relocation. Until next time, mahalo.